So in this video, we'll be looking at comparing acid strengths using pH and also conductivity. So first things first, we should remind ourselves that strong acids are ones that completely dissociate. So strong acids completely dissociate, and a weak acid is one which only partially dissociates. So we can see here the HCl has completely split up into its H plus and Cl ion components, whereas with the acidic acid, only some of them have split up into H plus and acetate. We'll look at an example to see why this is important. Let's consider two solutions. In our first solution, we have hydrochloric acid, which we know is a strong acid, and this is going to be completely dissociate to give us an H plus concentration of one mole per liter, which if we use our pH formula negative log of the H plus concentration, we would get a value of zero. In our second solution, we also have a one molar concentration solution, but this time, of CH3COH, acetic acid, which is our weak acid. This only partially dissociates, so despite the fact that it's one mole per liter, we're just going to say, for example, that the H plus concentration is 0.02 moles per liter. And so when we use our pH calculation for this one, the pH is only going to be 1.7. Here we can tell that the stronger acid is going to be producing a higher H plus concentration, and thus is going to result in a lower pH. So, the comparison, however, is only going to be fair between these two if we have an equal starting concentration, both of them being 1.0 moles per liter, and they are monoprotic, meaning that there is only one dissociation or one proton dissociation. So, let's look at another example where we have these two solutions. We're comparing HCl, the same solution, same concentration, but this time we're comparing it with 1 moles per liter of H2SO4, which is also a strong acid. The first proton completely dissociates, so the first proton is strong, but the second proton is weak, it only partially dissociates, which means that the H plus concentration is actually going to be a little bit greater than 1.0, and we're just saying in this case that it's going to be 1.2. If we use our pH calculation again, negative log of the H plus concentration, we get negative 0.79. I said earlier that we wanted to compare monoprotic acids. Diprotic strong acid, such as H2SO4, it produces more H+, meaning that it has a lower pH. However, we can compare these because both the first proton for HCl and H2SO4 are strong. Let's look at an example. How does the pH of a 0 0.010 mole per liter solution of HCl compared with that of a 0.01 mole per liter solution of HF. Well, both acids have the same concentration. Both of them are monoprotic. Both of them, we're assuming, have their pHs measured at the same temperature. However, HCl is a strong acid, meaning that it fully deprotonates, and HF is a weak acid, meaning that it does not fully deprotonate. And so as a consequence, there must be a higher H plus concentration for HCl than for HF, and thus HF is going to have a higher pH than HCl. So high pH means less acidic. Let's look at another example. So we have an aqueous solution of acetic acid, which is a monoprotic acid. If we remember, acetic acid has this formula CH3COOH. It has a pH of 2.4. At the same temperature, an aqueous solution of hydrochloric acid has a pH of 3.4. The student concludes that acidic acid is stronger than hydrochloric acid. Assess the student's statement. Now notice the verb in the question as well. Assess the student's statement. We want to make a judgment and give some explanation for our judgment about that statement. Now the concentration of acidic acid and hydrochloric acid is not given, so therefore it's not valid to use pH to determine strength. Although the pH of the acidic acid is lower, we know that HCl is a strong acid because it fully deionizes, while acidic acid only partially deionizes. So the explanation for this statement or the observation must be that acidic acid must have been more concentrated, which is why it has a greater pH than that of the hydrochloric acid. And remember that while pH and strength can be correlated, they are for the most part independent of one another. So besides using pH to compare strength, we can also use something called electrical conductivity. And again, the solutions need to have an equal concentration and be at the same temperature in order for this to be valid. 
So the electrical conductivity, what is it? It's the effectiveness for a substance to conduct electricity. So electricity is just the movement of electrons. To conduct electricity, we have to have charge carriers, and ions can act as such charge carriers because they are charged. So what we should expect is that if we have more ions, we have a greater electrical conductance, meaning that there is going to be greater flow of electricity. And we should know that the number of ions which are in solution is going to be affected by the concentration and the strength of the acid. If we have a concentrated acid, such as this beaker on the left, there's going to be a greater concentration of hydrogen ions, and so we should expect a greater electrical conductivity. Now, if we have a dilute acid like this one on the right hand side of the same acid, we're going to have a lower hydrogen ion concentration, and so we should expect a lower electrical conductivity. If we compare the strong and the weak acid for an equimolar solution, meaning that there is the same number of moles of acid in the solution, the strong acid is going to have a higher H plus concentration or greater electrical conductivity than that of the weak acid, which has lower electrical conductivity. There is potential, however, for the weak acid solution to have a great electrical conductivity if the strong acid is dilute, which is why we can only be comparing equimolar monoprotic acid solutions. You might be wondering why the base strength has not been covered yet, but that's because for the most part, the comparison of base strength and acid strength, we apply the same kind of principles. So the pH, we want equimolar strong bases, they have a high pH, and conductance the strong bases are going to have higher electrical conductivity because they have higher OH- ion concentration. Something that's a little bit different for hydroxide, however, is that solubility actually needs to be taken into account. We know that group 1 and group 2 are both strong acids, meaning that they fully deprotonate. But group 2 hydroxides are only sparingly soluble in water, which means that the dissociation is limited by the solubility. As a consequence of this, the dissociation will reach an equilibrium when the solution becomes saturated, and for an equivalent amount of group 1 and group 2 hydroxide dissolved in water, because group 1 hydroxides are water-soluble and completely dissociate, we should expect that group 1 hydroxide will have a higher pH than group 2 hydroxide. Let's look at this example here. So we're comparing a 0.010 mole per liter solution of potassium hydroxide and a 0.010 mole solution of methanamine, which is a weak base. Question asks, which will have a higher pH? First off, we can compare these solutions since they both have the same concentration. Both pHs, we're going to be assumed, are being measured at the same temperature. And since potassium hydroxide is a strong base, group 1, it's likely going to be higher in pH than methanamine, which is a weak base. It's going to be less dissociating. In this next question, we're now comparing a 0.10 mole per liter solution of sodium hydroxide and a 0.1 mole per liter solution of magnesium hydroxide. So both of these bases, they have the same concentration, and both of them are measured at the same temperature we're assuming, which is why we're going to be able to do this comparison. Both of them are also strong bases, so they completely dissociate. However, NaOH is a group 1 hydroxide. That means that it's going to be very soluble. MgOH2 is only sparingly soluble, if we remember, because it's a group 2 alkaline earth hydroxide. So as a result of this, the sodium hydroxide solution is going to have a higher OH concentration because it's able to dissociate more since it's going to be soluble. And thus, we should expect for this equimolar solution, sodium hydroxide will have a higher pH. So we said earlier that the magnesium hydroxide will have a lower pH than sodium hydroxide. But how do we calculate the pH of the magnesium hydroxide if it's only sparingly soluble? So if we're looking at the data sheet, we actually get the KSP value for magnesium hydroxide, and that's going to be equal to 5.61 times 10 to the minus 12. And to calculate the pH, what we want to do is we want to work out what the hydroxide concentration is and then subtract the calculated pOH from 14. So writing our ionization equation, MgOH2 is going to be forming Mg2 plus plus 2OH minus. We know now that the KSP expression by using these values is going to be 
So h minus squared times mg2 plus. But we don't know what the concentration of each of these is going to be. We can, however, work this out by using an ice table. So initially, MgOH2 has some amount x. Because it's strong, it completely dissociates, which means at the end of the reaction, all of it's reacted. We have minus x and we have 0 left over. Mg and 2OH minus, initially we have 0. But Mg is going to be increasing 1. So one of these, 1x of these, is going to split up into 1x of these plus x to give us a value of x. And 2H minus, because it's 2, we're going to get plus 2x and end up with a value of 2x. What we can now do is we can sub these values back into this equation. So Ksp, we're just going to keep it simple. Ksp is equal to x times 2x all squared, and that equals to 4x cubed. And so what we're going to do now is going to work out what x is. So x equals 2 ksp, the cube root of the ksp, divided by 4. And then what we're going to do in order to work out what our value of OH minus is, we need to multiply this by 2. And then OH minus equals to 2x. It should equal to a value of 1.12 times 10 to the minus 4. And the POH is then the negative log of this value. So negative log of OH minus. That equals to 3.951. And then we subtract this number from 14. So 14 minus 3.951. That equals to 10.049.